The Samsung Galaxy S21 is coming with some big improvements and I'll be sharing the details right after this. Today's video is sponsored by Wondershare's Demo Creator. Demo Creator is an easy to use recording and editing software for PC that allows you to quickly screen record and edit video content in a clean and efficient way. You can go from the editor straight into screen recording to quickly add footage to your creation. You can use camera footage or anything else that you may want to edit. Demo Creator allows you to easily add titles or new text into your footage using a simple and intuitive drag and drop system. We can even drag on new transitions transitions between clip splits in just a matter of seconds and we can even do more complex effects like green screening in just a few simple clicks. Demo Creator makes recording and editing easy and simple regardless of your current knowledge or skill level and best of all is you can try Demo Creator for free today by clicking the download links in the description below. So this week, it's all good news for the Samsung Galaxy S21. We've got confirmation of specs, news of an incredible new design, and camera upgrades for the photographers. Before we get started though, please like the video if you're a fan of Samsung, and let me know in the comments what device you're watching this video on. First story of the day and something we do need to clear up is the transparent display rumors for the Galaxy S21. Samsung filed a patent for a futuristic handset with a transparent display and it's also been rendered by Let's Go Digital. While it is incredible and something that we may see in a future device, the patent has only just been filed so it's 100% not going to be included in the Galaxy S21. We do however have a new display for the Galaxy S21 and it's going to please many of you. First of all we've got news of an LTPO display with a 120Hz refresh rate and Samsung are apparently going to allow users to have 120Hz and a Quad HD Plus resolution at the same time. This is thanks to the LTPO and adaptive refresh rate technology that will only increase the refresh rate when it's beneficial to the user which in turn is going to save on battery life. We've already had confirmation of the battery which boasts a 3 1880 milliamp hour for the S21 and 4660 for the S21 Plus. And if that wasn't enough for you guys, we've also got the hope that the Galaxy S21 is going to be coming with the much anticipated in display selfie camera. It's been a bit of a roller coaster when it comes to the in display camera news, but popular Samsung leaker Ice Universe stated Samsung Display's in display selfie camera solution is further ahead than others. Samsung have stricter requirements than other brands, and the under display camera of the Galaxy. Galaxy S21 is in Schrodinger's cat state. Samsung displays are arguably the best mobile display maker in the world and that's why they also make displays for popular brands such as Apple and OnePlus. You can be rest assured that they won't release it until it's fully ready but when they do release it then it will work very well. Ice Universe has also confirmed an improved camera on the Galaxy S21. He said it's still going to be a 108 megapixel sensor but it's going to be the successor to the HM1 found in the S20. Now last week Samsung finally confirm the successor in a new range of ISOCELL sensors and this is going to be called the HM2. The new sensors are 0.7 micrometer sensors and with the ISOCELL technology it's allowed them to reduce the size of the module by 10%. The HM2 delivers super phase detect and this is a faster and more effective phase detect autofocus. It's also going to provide 9 in 1 pixel binning as well as 3 times lossless zoom. On top of all this we've got news that the Galaxy S21 is going to ditch the 3D time of flight sensor and this is to include a second telephoto lens. This second telephoto camera is supposedly a folded zoom telephoto that's going to support over five times optical zoom. The reason for ditching the time of flight is that Samsung have found users not to be utilizing it as much as they thought and the focusing issues that we previously had. And finally, for those that haven't heard, we may be getting an S Pen on the Galaxy S21. While this may seem crazy, you have to understand that the Note and the S line are becoming very similar and the S range has caught up in sizing. The Fold is gaining traction and merging the two lines together is going to allow Samsung to focus more on the foldables at the end of the year and more on the S at the start. Now this isn't confirmed but it is of course a possibility, with everything changing so much in the smartphone industry we're bound to be in for a few surprises here and there. So it's great that we're able to focus on plenty of positive news today for the Galaxy S21 and for those interested we're going to run through the full specs and details we know so far. For my regular viewers you guys have probably seen this so just skip to the next video but if you are new here then hit subscribe now and we're going to get right into it. 
When it comes to the actual design of the Samsung Galaxy S21, the truth is it really doesn't matter too much right now. While there may be a design in mind and a prototype already out there at Samsung, it won't have been finalized just yet, so it could of course still change. We can however get information on hardware and specs that are unlikely to change. The first actual leak we have comes from well-known leaker Ice Universe, and he published a tweet last week to say that Samsung is considering an in-display camera sensor on the Samsung Galaxy S21. He advises that they're evaluating the feasibility of the technology, and if it's ready, then it will be in the Galaxy S21. Everyone has been very excited for this new technology and it's always been expected that 2021 is going to be the year it's delivered. We can finally have a full screen display without motorized parts and the only thing that people are worried about is the additional cost that it might bring. We've also got reports suggesting that this in-display selfie camera is going to be using a half inch selfie sensor with a 48 megapixel resolution. The Samsung Galaxy S21 will of course be using the new and improved next generation OLED display. We've had patents filed for curved displays with protruding buttons and we've now got a new patent showcasing a very curved display. The patent was discovered by Let's Go Digital and it was rendered by Concept Creator. It shows a display that's not only curved at both edges but it also has curves at the top and the bottom. While it does look similar to the new design from Huawei, it's actually very different as Huawei's is just just the glass and not the display itself. The patent is for the screen to curve on all edges and it includes the rounded off corners. Now we know it is intended for a Galaxy as it was listed as a Galaxy smartphone display and it's also logged as that on the World Intellectual Property Office database. Its full screen design means that it will of course have an in-display fingerprint scanner and it helps fuels reports that the in-display selfie camera will be there as well. Some people are speculating that this is of course for the Note 20 but many believe it's for the Galaxy S21. S21. Next we've got news of an incredible 150 megapixel nano cell camera to debut in the Galaxy S21. They already broke records with their latest 108 megapixel sensor that we saw in the S20 Ultra and now they're pushing the boundaries even further. The new 150 megapixel camera is going to be launching towards the end of this year which will most likely be too late for the Note range and this means we could well have it debuting in the Galaxy S21. We also had patents filed by Samsung for multiple technologies that could also be present in the Galaxy S21. We had a patent for a holographic projector to produce stereoscopic images in the air, almost like a 3D hologram. While it could be a cool feature, I think it's just too gimmicky and not something we'll see in the S21. We also had patents filed for a lot of sensors that were initially thought to be in the Galaxy Note 20 but they are now looking very unlikely. This means if they are to go ahead with these plans then we could well see them in the S21 instead. First we've got mention of an electromyography or EMG sensor. Now EMG is used to measure electrical signals generated by muscles and can be used to assess the health of a muscle and the nerve cells that control them. We also have mention of an electroencephalogram sensor or EEG sensor. This is again to measure electrical signals but instead of muscles EEG sensors are for measuring our brain activity. Finally we have the electrocardiogram or ECG sensor and this measures electrical activity of the heart and help diagnose abnormal heart rhythms. While we always get many patents filed which do fuel rumors of new features, I believe if any are to be true then it's going to be the new sensors that we see in the S21. While a holographic projector would be an incredible feature, it would be very limited in its use and not something I can see them doing. Fitness and health are very popular at the moment and used commonly in today's smartphone peripherals so I think this would be a great fit for the S21. Now of course all of that is estimation and speculation from patents, Samsung file a lot of patents to protect their ideas and it doesn't mean it's definitely going to be happening. One thing we can be certain of though is that the Galaxy S21 is of course going to come in a few different sizes to suit all consumers, it's going to have the latest Samsung display along with the best hardware and cameras they can source at the time. Going by the current releases we can expect them to stick with the rectangular shaped camera module on the rear and they're going to provide 3-6 to six cameras depending on variants.
When it comes to the chipset, they'll of course be using the Snapdragon 875, which is a 5 nanometer system on chip. It's going to provide better performance and efficiency over the current chipsets used, and unfortunately, as usual, this is only going to be for certain regions, including North America. And for most markets globally, we'll be getting the equivalent Exynos chip that doesn't actually perform as well. We'll likely get the usual choices of 128, 256 or 512 internal storage and this will of course be UFS 3.1. When it comes to RAM, we'll likely be getting a choice of 12 or 16 gigs of RAM, which is still more than we're ever going to need. There will likely be a hybrid SIM tray to support micro SD cards, but there won't be a 3.5mm audio jack. It's going to have all of the usual sensors and we can of course expect an in-display fingerprint scanner. Until the design and the screen sizes are finalised, we unfortunately can't estimate the battery capacity, but expect slight improvements on the predecessors and of course wireless and reverse wireless charging. As always, it's going to be IP68 water resistant and when it comes to price, it's no doubt going to be expensive. Samsung surprised us with just how high the Galaxy S20 Ultra launched at, so it's going to be interesting to see if they create another very premium device or work at bringing this cost down. Of course, there's unfortunately a lot of speculation right now, but as soon as we receive any solid leaks, I'll be sharing them with you guys straight away. As always though, I'd like to know your thoughts in the comments, who out there is waiting for the Samsung Galaxy S21, and what do you think of these new cameras? But thanks for watching the video, if you liked it smash a thumbs up, if you didn't hit the thumbs down twice, and I'll see you guys in the next one.